Okay, I think we're on video three or four on the Subaru, Subaru Impreza on the air conditioning on this. I don't want you to see the pressures because we don't need the pressures. I want you to see superheat and I want you to see subcooling. So we're taking subcooling off the liquid line that comes out of the condenser. This is the only easy access point for me to get to it right here. So that's where we're taking our subcooling on this vehicle. And it's not possible to have a negative subcooling. I mean, on a good operating system, but we have it. And look at our superheat for this particular vehicle. That is definitely no bueno, dude. And that's not flying very well there. And we got no heat. Oh, I don't have my laptop on or my PDA to show you the temperature. Basically, it's air temperature coming out of the dash. We basically know we are low on refrigerant. Our refrigerant is not stacked. Okay, let's use the word stacked. Our refrigerant is not backed up or stacked in the lower, say, 12% of the condenser to give us a solid uh, liquid column that could be subcooled. That is not happening. That's why we have the SC uh, subcooling is no good right there. And our superheat is really high. So we don't have leftover refrigerant that is making it through the evaporator, not only cooling off the passenger and absorbing the heat out of the passenger compartment, but leftover energy, leftover work, it still has ability to do some work. So it comes out of the suction line cold so it could deliver the mass of refrigerant oil that has been ejected out of the compressor and flush it through and bring it back to the compressor for lubrication. It's not doing that so well now. And cool oil and cool oil, uh, refrigerant being delivered and dropped back in the compressor that wants to run hot because it has heat of compression and it has heat of friction. And you want to get rid of those things. You don't want to overheat it. So right now, if I shut this vehicle off and I recovered the refrigerant out of the low side slowly, and I pulled this compressor off and the manufacturer said this compressor should have two ounces of oil in it. And I go to pour out the two ounces of oil. There will not be two ounces of oil in there. And you go, oh, these big leaks, they leaked out all the oil. No, those were just little stains. Remember in the other video, I showed you the little stain down there at the bottom of the receiver dryer and another one back there at that fitting. I can't show you my pumps in the way. But the other one right there, that's just drops of oil. That's not ounces of oil. So you'd come up and go to pour this out and you might only find one half ounce of refrigerant oil out of the two ounces the manufacturer supposedly said, you know, we're just using this as general reference, that should be in there. Well, where did all that oil go? All that oil is back up into the evaporator. That's where that oil went and it's not leaving until we fill the system up with refrigerant to the full level so it could flush that oil out and get it back to the compressor. <clears throat> this is all in the oil. When you do compressor swap outs, you gotta remember that. Most of the times the compressor went out, it was lack of oil because it was stuck back there. Now, all your oil is back there. You only pull out a half an oil or no oil in here of your burnt out compressor. You put on a brand new compressor that has the full amount of oil for the whole system. Well, now you just doubled the amount of oil in the system. Don't wanna do that. All right. So let's check out of this. I'm gonna give them the bad news. Uh, if it is a plug down there, I gotta get back there and still look. Change the desiccant material, order a desiccant material because when you get the desiccant bag, it'll come with a new plug and O-ring. That'll take care of that leak if that's what it is. Get a new O-ring at this fitting down here at the bottom of the condenser from the liquid line down here. That'll take care of that problem. Change the O-rings that are notorious for leaking on Subarus right here. So we'll take, take care of those right there. And is that all I said? I think that was it. And uh, I blew out with the air on the passenger uh, cabin filter and I cleaned that. It was good enough to go. That's all. Oh, let me show you pressures now. Okay. Nine PSI. 105 psi and i think i've shown you cars where 9 psi or 12 psi is normal on some cars and most of you haven't been around or have enough experience to know that 
9, 10, 12 PSI can be normal and circumcircular. You never heard of such a thing, but on this car, it definitely is not. All right, I'll see you guys.